Welcome. Thank you for being here. We're going to start tonight's festivities with the Pecan Heritage Award, and David Cole is going to do the presentation introduction. Please welcome David Cole. Well, good evening all. I am David Cole. I'm the president of the Science History Institute, and I want to thank you all for attending the presentation of this year's Pitcon Heritage Award. The Science History Institute is a museum and library that collects, interprets, and shares engaging stories in the histories of chemistry, chemical engineering, and the life sciences. We like to say that we tell the stories behind the science, shedding light on the origins of science and technologies that people encounter but often ignore in their everyday lives. To learn more about our mission and all the ways in which we serve scientific enterprise, I invite you to visit the, muse the Institute's museum and library online at www.sciencehistory.org, or please come see us in person at 315 Chestnut Street right here in Philadelphia, in Old City, Philadelphia. And please do listen to our podcasts, read our magazine and blog, attend our programs, and browse our digital collections. It's all free. So you can be free to discover the science in your life. This evening, the Science History Institute is delighted to participate in the presentation of the PitCon Heritage Award, which celebrates a lifetime of achievement in both academic and industrial settings. This evening, it gives me great pleasure to introduce this year's honoree, Fasha Majur. Born in Iran, educated in the UK and the US, Fasha is an architect, an entrepreneur, a visionary, and a philanthropist who designs cultures of innovation that lead his scientific companies down the paths of transformative and indeed explosive success. Fasha was the founder and the CEO of Phenomenex and the CEO of Phenova and InventX with subsidiaries in 16 countries and 75 distributors and partners around the world. With no background in chemistry, he nevertheless built leading companies in the chromatography world involved in research and development, marketing and product delivery. In 2016, after 34 years at the helm, he sold his companies to Danaher Corporation, and in the same year acquired Lycon in Berlin, founded Farona LLC, and Neoterex LLC, a company focused on the micro sampling of biological fluids, particularly blood. In December of 2021, Fasha sold Neoterex to Trajan Scientific, a public Australian company. Fasha's success confirms the power of his appreciation for elegant design calculated risk, and simple concepts that can lead to significant improvements, especially when combined with his laser focus, endless energy, tenacity, relentless pursuit of excellence, and I'm told an appetite for very long hours and seven day work weeks, and complete and dedicated focus and attention to whatever he takes on. You can see that Fasha embodies all the PitCon Heritage Award represents. And now, it is my great pleasure to invite Fasha Majeur to the stage to accept this award. Please, sir. The PitCon Heritage Award for Fasha Majeur reads, in recognition of his founding and longtime leadership of Phenomenex, the global market leader in chromatography consumables for his acumen in designing corporate cultures of innovation that have resulted in transformative success and for his dedication to volunteerism, advocacy, and philanthropy. Please join me in congratulating Fasha Majeur. Well, um, thank you very, very much, uh, Dr. Cole, and for the award, of course. 
it's really quite something, a massive honor and extremely humbling. Now, as some of my colleagues um, from Phenomenix uh, are here, they very well know I tend to, when I'm talking about a subject matter that should only take about three minutes, I drift off and I go about sort of taking 20 or 30 minutes with people in the audience half sleep. So in order not to drift off, don't laugh please, you know, you know, <laughs> um, uh, I have written what I'm about to say so I don't drift off, so please bear with me uh, and hopefully in the next 10 minutes you will be awake. <clears throat> Before I start, I wish to thank, take this opportunity to, to thank Dr. Ron Majors, who also happens to be with us. Um, and men, most people, I believe, know Dr. Majors for encouraging me to apply for this award. Clearly, he had the faith in me that I didn't have about myself. While I had enormous amount of courage um, about uh, and what uh, Phenomenix had achieved, I certainly did not see myself in a position to try and compare myself with the previous award winners. So had it not been for his encouragement of Dr. Majors and my, my wife, who is also present today, I wouldn't have submitted my application at all. So thank you both for having faith in me more than I did about myself. When I started in uh, Phenomenix in 1982, I couldn't begin to imagine receiving something like this at all. The idea would have been completely absurd. We were just a tiny speck at the time and the distance between us and the giants of the industry was so vast that it seemed impossible to cross. And there were many giants, as many of you may remember, in the early days. Not so many in the latter part when I um, was done with chromatography. Still, I decided the giants were the guys we were to compete with if we were going to have any chance at all. Over the years, I ended up in tussles with some of the giants, sometimes friendly, sometimes you can say, not too friendly. But even while we were competing, I couldn't help but admire what they had achieved. I must say, I was always slightly in awe of Waters Corporation and its founders, Jim Waters in particular. These guys had been the pioneers laying the foundation of the whole industry. I saw Waters as a giant target in a business sense. But in terms of science, we are standing on the shoulders of that giant, and I knew it. So, I'd so I would like to start by acknowledging Jim's contribution and recognizing that I, the debt that I and thousands of others owe to him and those who worked with him. Their efforts shaped my future life before I even knew what chromatography meant. Now that word chromatography became pretty important to me, but I probably encountered it a little later in life than some of the others present here today. When I started out in business, which was nothing more than a red telephone in the corner of my drawing board, in my grand 10 foot by 10 foot architectural empire, I had no background in science, None at all. I had failed chemistry exams at age of 15 and didn't do much better in biology either. So the fact that I ended up building a career in chromatography, well, it seems like something almost miraculous. And that makes receiving this award a genuinely humbling experience. Once I started Phenomenics though, well, I did have to work extremely hard which meant 12 to 16 hour days, seven days a week, just trying to catch up. And there are no exaggeration in those numbers. I did that for many years. I started out with no knowledge of industry, no leads, no funding, 
and no unique scientific breakthrough to promote. I had to build the company from the ground up, and that was an approach I stuck to for over the years. I never took a single cent of investment at any stage in the company's history. Everything we did, we did with our own resources, which were quite negligible at the time, and I mean quite negligible. In that sense, not being actually a science was, was a great help rather than a liability. It also meant I didn't become attached to products or advances we made or others. Our motto was breaking with tradition. And that meant dropping a project if necessary so we could keep moving ahead. I knew that if we sat still, we would be wiped out by major competitors. So instead of me attempting to be a scientist, I learned to be a technologist. You could say a manager of scientific progress. Of course, being a good manager isn't enough. Without the real scientists, we would have been toast. And I was very fortunate to work with some truly exceptional individuals and a great range of them too. Phenomenex was a remarkably diverse team. Right from the outset, our commitment to inclusion, which wasn't a very fashionable word back in early 80s, was one of our greatest strengths. Our company was indeed a melting pot, and that range of perspectives and opinions fueled the fire of innovation. Without that breadth of views, Phenomenex couldn't have achieved half as much as it did. So I want to give an enormous amount of thanks and credit to my employees, my companions in every country and every department who selflessly created our journey of one success after another. In 34 years of my tenure with Phenomenex, we progressed in every single year in every one of our companies around the world. And, the fact, and in fact, we never regressed in any way in good or poor economic times. Working together with such talented and driven team to build something that really mattered was an unforgettable experience. So of course, this award is indeed shared with each and every one of my amazing colleagues, past or present. So thank you, colleagues. Without you, nothing would have been possible. And it did matter. The products we created together, the advances we made, they changed things. They helped make the food we eat safer and healthier. They helped scientists discover many more diseases and make drugs that were more effective and much, much, much more. In fact, they made a real incremental impact on millions of lives. And that's an achievement that I am by far most proud of. These successes also had another very important effect. They provided Phenomenex with resources to take philanthropy very seriously. For example, whenever we opened a new subsidiary in any country, philanthropic work was the benchmark of the culture. It was part of our DNA. And that work mattered, and very much so too. We were able to assist schools in many countries and even build a school in the jungles of Belize with help of our own staff on site, getting bitten by billions of uh, uh, pests and, and other things. Some of us ended up, including myself, in hospital, but we survived. We provided hundreds of thousands of uh, meals to those who needed them in several countries, we supported STEM programs, donated many gallons of blood every, every year, and the list goes on and on and on. Not a week went by without one of our companies undertaking a major philanthropic project. And it, if I may be boastful about this in, in this case, I absolutely am certain that we led the industry at least on this front. Thinking back 
to those years right now and to the incredible people I work with, there were also several sad occasions too, as one could expect in 34 to 40 years. One in particular that really affected me not so long ago, actually just over a year ago, but it feels like yesterday, I lost a very, very good friend. In fact, the very best. And I would like to dedicate this award to him. Doug McCrory joined Phenomenex right back in the early, early years. When he came on board, we were thick as thieves. He was there beside me every day and stayed with me all the way through the sale of Phenomenex and beyond to New Terex. I met Doug almost as soon as he arrived in California. He had just finished university in Maryland and had driven across the country to what he thought was the promised land of sun, sea, and unattached single ladies. <laughs> when we first met, he was working at a, as a salesman at a gym, just like most young graduates. I certainly didn't want to buy a gym membership, as I'm clearly, you can tell from my lean and fit posture, and, I, and it would have been completely unnecessary. And I was absolutely determined I couldn't be persuaded either. Of course, when I finally walked out of the gym, I had a new gym membership in my pocket and a ton of add-ons, useless add-ons I didn't need, I never used, but the most important, I walked away with a great new friend. I didn't use my gym membership much, but Doug and I stayed in touch, and it was long before I persuaded him to put his skills to work at Phenomenex. As we grew, Doug's ability to, to talk to anyone about anything made him a vital part of our company's culture. He was our motivator, our cheerleader, a teacher to thousands, literally. Someone who could keep the team focused on the future while free, feeling great about themselves. But for all these magnificent qualities, the thing I like, I remember most fondly about Doug is that he could also be a complete idiot. In fact, we could be a pair of idiots together. And that was something I valued so very much. I can't count the number of nights we spent working till very late hours only to end up haunch over our desk, giggling like schoolboys over some silly jokes. Doug was the brother I never had, my best friend, my closest companion. He helped fill my life, and I still think about him every single day. That's why I would like to dedicate this award to Doug McCrory, salesman, educator, cheerleader, idiot, friend. Thank you. <laughs>